Hi and welcome to this, our Applications in Two Dimensions lesson. But what topic are we dealing with? Oh yes, we are still sticking with trigonometry. And I suppose, in a way, Pythagoras' theorem. Which seems that they're actually linked very much together. As you see here, this is a fabulous graphic that gives us all sorts of things dealing with trigonometry, angles, degrees, tangents, cotangent. Ooh, we like cotangents, but slightly beyond. But if I look at the title that says application in two dimensions, part of my brain goes, well, does that mean that we're going to end up with three dimensions? Yes, but not quite yet. But even with three dimensional shapes, all right, and that, for example, might be a cuboid. You don't have to worry because the great thing is, so long as you can find a right angle triangle that you can extract from the diagram, once you've drawn that sketch of that right angle triangle, your life is set. Why? Because so long as you remember Sokatoa, then life can't get any more complicated. So long as you have your calculator in the right mode, and that is DEG, life gets really not complicated. So what I'm saying here is the great thing about trigonometry and ones which seems to confuse people is having real world applications. We seem to find, you know, looking for right angle triangles quite challenging. Either that or we seem to have come to the belief that we can't add lines or change shapes. Now, this course is mapped very much against the Cambridge textbook. And I know that the previous exercise to this particular chapter or this particular exercise had thrown a number of my personal students. <clears throat> but why did it get thrown? Well, and I am not in any way, shape or form trying to infringe copyright. But these are great examples from the Cambridge textbook. If we look at this example here, I suppose the first thing you have to say is where is the right angle triangle? There doesn't seem to be one. I mean, obviously, we've got these two little lines here, which stand for isosceles triangles. All right, it's an isosceles triangle. Those two sides are the same length. That makes that five centimeters. I've got some sort of angle here, but no right angle triangle. And this comes down to the idea that you can add lines to diagrams. There is nothing wrong with adding a line and splitting that shape in half. And as soon as I split that line in half, or that shape in half, I have everything that I need to do. Huge advice to you, and I'm going to rub this out to give myself some space, is always draw a secondary sketch of what it is you're trying to do. You might think that's a waste of time. I'm telling you now, this is the easy stuff. It gets harder later on. And if you don't draw a secondary sketch of that right angle triangle, you might make mistakes. So for example, here's a common mistake. There's five centimeters, there's four centimeters, and off we go trying to find the, uh, the missing angle. But you've cut the shape in half. So this four centimeters is not four centimeters. It's actually two centimeters. So there's mistake number one. Now, let's go on. So uh, there is my angle. What two sides have I got? I've got my adjacent, and I always put an A, and I've got my hypotenuse. And so I know that is CAH. So cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Always write the formula. Cosine of theta is given by 2 upon 5. Theta is equal to the cosine to the minus 1 of 2 on 5. And theta comes out to be, using my trusty calculator, the wonderful value of 66.42 degrees to two decimal places. I'm assuming the question says to two decimal places. This question here is, again, a doozy. It seems to have lots of information. I mean, it's got these uh, little arrows. Now, I like that. That actually makes a lot of sense to me because I look at these arrows and the first thing I remember is something I teach called fuzzocks. Fuzzocks? What do you mean fuzzocks? I can hear you saying, well, I know that they are called in other languages uh, alternate angles and co-interior angles and uh, uh, what is it? Vertically opposite angles. And what's the other one? Alternate uh, corresponding angles. I don't remember those. I mean, obviously I do, um, and they're great. But I remember things in terms of letters. So first things first, if I've got this shape here with some parallel lines on it, what's the first letter I see? Well, I see a letter F. And there and there I know are exactly the same. And then there is the U, 
which there's my parallel line and my parallel line. And that looks to me like the shape of a U. And I know that this angle here and that angle there do not equal the same. They add to 180 degrees. This is a really good one to use in bearings. What was the other one? Z, uh, the Z rule. Uh, so that's parallel and that's parallel. And I know once again, the corners are the same because I can see a Z and the X is the easier one. That's the one that most of us remember as in opposite angles are the same. So having seen that parallel line in this question, I now know I have a Z shape, which means that angle there and that angle there are identical. Or more importantly, that angle which sits outside the triangle is now inside the triangle. And again, drawing a quick diagram, just but there's theta, that's 3.4, and that's 1.8. I can now carry on and choose what is it, opposite and hypotenuse, which will be sine. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of the angle is equal to 1.8 divided by 3.4. Now, a word of warning. If you got those two the wrong way around and try to do uh, 3.4 divided by 1.8 sine to the minus 1, your calculator will go, eh, eh, not going to happen. Why? Well, if you remember, going back to a previous lesson, the maximum value of a sine curve, if you remember, is equal to 1, and the minimum is minus 1. If you do the big number on the top divided by the small number, you're actually going to end up with a number much bigger than 1. And your calculator goes, well, I'm really sorry, but no, I can't work that out for you. So you've made a mistake. So as I say, theta in this situation would be sine to the minus 1 of 1.8 over 3.4. And I'll leave that to you to work out. Last lesson, or the last video I did, basically stated that they can give you too much information. I mean, look at this question. There's so much information, it's crazy. All three sides are given length. And for some reason, I've got two angles inside. Yes, but you can actually ignore parts of this question. If I want to find alpha, for example, then I'm just going to draw a diagram, and there is my alpha. And I know that all I need is two sides. I'm going to ignore the root 20, and I'm going to go off and do my calculation here. So opposite and adjacent, so that's tan of the angle is opposite divided by adjacent. Tan of my angle is 4 upon 2. Now, in this situation, again, going back to what we did before, tan's the, uh, uh, tan is the exception to the rule where you can have numbers bigger on the top. All right, so theta in this situation would be tan to the minus 1 of 4 on 2. And again, you can work that out in degrees. Now, the interesting thing here is, having found alpha, you can find beta using sort of year seven maths. Because if you remember, what do angles in a triangle add up to? Well, 180 degrees. You know, this angle here is 90 degrees. The chances are you've just found alpha. So if I do 180 minus 90 minus my angle for alpha, and we'll actually make that look a little bit more like alpha. No, I still look at that look like infinity. There you go. I can actually find my beta value. But a word of warning. When you use your calculation to try and find a later calculation, you need to be very careful and hope that you've not made a mistake. Because if you've made a mistake working out your alpha value, then you're going to make a mistake working out your beta value. So it might actually be worth, in this situation, going, drawing your triangle again. And once again, let's draw it the right way around so that it actually makes sense. There's beta, 2 and 4, and just work it out again. Now, there's some terminology that's actually really important. Angles of elevation and angles of depression. Now, here we can see an elevator, which in my mind only ever go up. Yes, I know you're going to sit there and go, no, 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 they go down as well. I know. And here... Yep, somebody who's feeling obviously quite low. Now, depression is not something to be joked about. It's something just to have for me to remember, right? And if you ever, ever feel fed up, you should and must talk to somebody, right? Depression is not fun. Um, it's not good. And it's something that desperately needs to be talked about, right? Never bottle things up. So elevation to me means going up. So when I'm looking at angles with elevation, we're actually starting from the bottom, and we are moving up. So angles of elevation are when you put your hand out horizontally and then raise it up. So that's the angle of elevation there. Elevation. And depression, well, depression means down. Uh, 
So in this situation, if this was my horizontal, the angle of depression would be starting from the horizontal and going down. So that is my angle of depression. Now, the great thing about these questions that come up or all the time is you'll undoubtedly have someone standing on a cliff and there'll be someone here and there'll be someone on a cliff and they'll give you, you know, the idea that if this is the person looking up at someone on the cliff, they'll give you the angle of depression. And let's say that's 30 degrees, for example. They'll tell you the cliff is, you know, 10 meters high, not a very high cliff, but anyway. And they'll say that they're like 30 meters away. And they'll go, ah, oh, you know, uh, or no, they won't give you that because that's too much information. So let's say, ah, oh, they want to find out how far that is. Well, the good news here is because that's parallel to this one here, you'll see that you've actually got a Z and those corner angles there are the same. So angles of elevation and angles of depression on the same diagram are actually the same value, which makes life a lot, lot easier. Yay! All right, so questions in two dimensions. All right, I'm not going to answer these questions, but I'll just talk over them. Two buildings are 60 meters apart. Hmm, bad grammar there. All right, so there's building number one. And I know for a fact here is building number two. We know that they are 60 meters apart. So I'm going to put on here 60 meters. It says that one of the mill buildings is 180 meters tall. And the other building is 240 meters tall. And it wants to find the angle of elevation from the shorter building to the taller building. So imagining we've got someone standing there and someone standing there. They just want to find the angle of elevation. Well, that's the one that is looking upwards. So do we have enough information to be able to find the angle? Well, firstly, I can see a right angle triangle. The good news is I know that distance there is 60 meters. But do I know what this distance is? Well, I should hope so because I know the tall building is 240 meters and the smaller building is 180 meters. And so looking at the height difference, I get 60 meters. And so theta can then go on to be found. How? By using tan. Theta is the opposite, divided by the adjacent. Tan theta is 60 divided by 60, which interestingly gives that theta is 45 degrees. How do I know that? It's coming out later. A spacecraft is hovering at an altitude of 280 meters. So there we go. So there's my spacecraft, 280 meters. Notice I didn't draw a spacecraft. The angle of elevation from a bystander to the spaceship is 38 degrees. So I now know that's 38 degrees. Find the horizontal distance from the spaceship to the bystander to the nearest centimeter. All right, so do I have everything I need? Yep, there's my right angle triangle. That's 280 meters. That's 38 degrees. Now, in this situation, they've given me the angle. Mm, interesting. So we are trying to find this distance here. That's opposite and adjacent again. So tan theta is the opposite, 280 divided by x. Well, in this situation, I know what theta is, so I can actually fill that in. So tan 38 is equal to 280 divided by x. And I know in this situation, because I've got a fraction equals a fraction, I can swap those two to give me that x is 280 divided by the tan of 38. Now, again, I'm not going to work that out. But what you've got to remember is that answer will come out in meters. But your question is quite clear that it wants it to the nearest centimeter. So just make sure that you then go on and convert that to centimeters. Now, what I like to do at the end of some of these is to lead on and say, well, where does this all lead to? Well, in methods units one and two, we take the ideas of trig and extend it in something called the unit circle. And this horrendous looking diagram, or horrendous at the moment, is actually the unit circle. And what you notice is we have measurements in degrees, which for some reason seem to count around going anti-clockwise. Then we have these strange things here with all pies in them. And then square roots. Wow. So that looks pretty complicated. And as I say, you start having to deal with square roots. We have this new measurement called radians. We have pi in it. We've met pi before in year nine, normally with circles. We have something called quadrants and an interesting little saying here called all stations to Canberra. Well, that's one of the ways I remember it. And just to sort of tell you what that's all about, 
all stations to Canberra. Now, while the all becomes evident in a moment, where have you seen the letters S, T and C before? Oh yes, sine, tan and cosine. So does this have something to do with trigonometry? I should go, go. But this is stuff moving on. So it's important in year 10 and year 11 that you get totally, totally familiar with Sokotoa and right angle triangles and trying to find lengths because it's going to make life so much easier. All right. That is the end of this particular jaunt through practical applications in two dimensions of trigonometry. I look forward to seeing you next time.